Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how to create this magic 8-ball effect, which is actually live on my Instagram right now, you can go check that out if you want, or there's a link in the description to the template which is available on my Gumroad page. It's pretty much like those who are you, what are you filters that cycles through a random selection of images, but I themed it to be a magic 8-ball, added in all the answers, and now when you tap on the screen, it cycles through, and you can ask it whatever question you like, I guess. Yeah, that's right, any question. So I'm gonna be going through how to create the assets themselves using Photoshop, and then we'll import all of those and we'll set it up in the patch editor using animation and things like that. It's gonna be pretty fun, so let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm gonna create a new project. The width and height will be set to 1080 by 1080 pixels to make a nice white square. Next, I'm gonna drag in an image from Google, this magic eight ball that I found. Make sure that it's all scaled up nice and fits inside of the square that we've created. Now I'm gonna Command C, and Command V this layer, so I have a duplicate, and I'm gonna rename it to Outline. We're gonna select our quick selection tool here from the drop down menu, and I'm just gonna fill in this inside area with the white and the eight, and now I'm gonna hit E or Erase, and I'm gonna erase this part here so you can no longer see it. If I hide these two layers underneath, then you'll see what's happened. And now I'm gonna Command C, Command V to duplicate that layer again, and I'm gonna rename this Blank Template. Now we can select the magic wand tool from up here, highlight this inside area, and then select the paint bucket tool with the shortcut G, make sure that it's set to white, and then just fill in that inside circle. Now I'm gonna duplicate the blank template, and I'm gonna hide every other layer underneath, and now we're gonna add some text. So I'm gonna hit T, the shortcut for text, otherwise you can hit this button down here, and you can select your font, you can change the size, and what I'm gonna do is just hit central so that everything's kind of formatted correctly. And I'm also gonna make sure that the color is set to black. So now when we type, we can add our first answer, which in this case is yes, and then hit V to move, and just scale it up until you're happy with the result. Make sure it's pretty central, everything's looking kind of nice, maybe a little bit bigger, get that centered, lovely. And that's pretty much it, that's our first answer. So what I'm gonna do now is create a folder by hitting this button down here a group, and I'm gonna rename it Answers. And now I'm gonna select the text that we've created and the blank template copy, and I'm gonna right click and just merge those two layers together. So now we have our first answer. Drag that inside of the group, and I'm gonna move the group just down here underneath the blank template. So now we can make this invisible, and we can turn on our blank template one more time. If we copy and paste that, then we get a second one. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna add the next answer, which is it is certain. And I might format that so this one's on the second line. That's why it's useful to have everything central. And then you just move it into place, scale it up a little bit, try and get it to fill as much of the space as possible. And once you're happy with the result, highlight those two layers, right click and merge layers. So now we can drag our second answer down here. And I'm gonna do the same thing now for all 20 of the Magic 8 Ball answers. So I'll skip forwards and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so I finished every layer. You can see as I scroll down, they're all visible. So if I make some of them invisible, then you'll be able to see all the answers that I've added in. Um, we still have down at the bottom, our blank template, our outline, and our original 8 Ball. So what we're gonna do now is export all of these as layers. So I'm gonna hit File, Export, Layers to Files, and then select the area that you want them to go to. I've already created a folder on my desktop, so 8-Ball Answers, and then open that, run it, and it will just export every single one of those layers. You see it happening down on the right, and there we go, everything's exported. So if we scroll over to the desktop and open up this folder, then you'll see every single image is already ready to go. We have our outline here, the blank template, the original 8-Ball, and then all of the answers that I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna drag these three out because we only want the answers to be in this folder. That way when we import them, we're not importing those as part of the animation sequence. And now we're gonna create a new project in Spark AR, import all of these files and get everything set up the way we want. Okay, so here we are in a new project. I've already dragged the original 8-ball texture in here and now I'm gonna right click in the scene and add a face tracker. Inside the face tracker, you wanna add a plane and I'm just gonna scale that up a little bit to about 1.5 on the X and 1.5 on the Y and then you can adjust it manually to position it above the forehead, but you can also do it in here. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna move it to 0.15, which is right in place where I want it on the forehead. Now I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna rename this one Start Position, and I'm gonna rename this one Answers. And now we can add materials for each one. So Start Position Matte, and Answers, Create New Material, 
and rename that one to Answers Matte. Now I'm gonna select both of the materials, change the shader type from standard to flat, and now we can add the eight ball texture to the start position material. You won't see it yet because it's underneath the answers, so if I hide that, then you'll be able to see it there with the transparent background looking pretty sweet. I'll make that visible again, and now we can add our animation. So if we hit this plus button down here for Add Asset, we're gonna select Animation Sequence, and then under the texture file here, we're gonna choose New Texture, and just add in all of the answers that we've created in Photoshop. Should be 20 total if you're doing the eight ball, uh, or if you're doing something else, it will be a different number. But select them all, open them up, and it will format them all into a nice animation sequence. It might take a while. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna apply it to the material texture here for our answers. So under texture, you just wanna add the animation sequence, and you'll be able to see it spinning infinitely. If we go back to the animation sequence here, then we can adjust the loop. You can turn the loop off and it will just stay on one frame, but we want that on. We also want it to randomize, so it cycles through completely randomly and will land on a random image at the end. And we're gonna change the frame rate from 25 to somewhere around 12, so it's moving a little bit slower. Next, we're gonna add a screen tap because that's how we trigger this. So double tap in your patch editor, add a screen tap. From the gesture state here, we're gonna add a switch which will trigger once we tap on the screen. And from the switch, we're gonna add a knot patch, which will reverse this signal. So basically what we want is for the answers to sit on top at first, and then when you tap on the screen, it will alternate layers, and you'll be able to see this spinning animation underneath. So now if we select both of these planes, we can create visibility patches for them. We can move the answers one up here and the start position here. So if we connect the main switch here to the answers, then it's not visible to start with. And if we connect this knot to the start position, then all you'll see is the eight ball sitting on top. I hit refresh and now I can simulate touch and when I tap on the screen it will alternate between the standard 8-ball image and this animation sequence that we've imported and you can tap it again to stop. Now we're going to create another patch for the runtime. So double tap, add a runtime patch. This basically just counts how long the filter has been running for in the background. Now we're going to drag out from here and create an offset patch which calculates the offset value for a number. I'm sure Quavo is very jealous that he didn't get a patch of his own. And now from this offset patch, we're going to create a less than, which basically just checks whether one number is lower than another. Our first input being the runtime. You can see that count going up here and also in here. And this second input here is the number of seconds that it will take for our loop animation to cycle through before it finally settles on an answer. And that's based on a comparison to the runtime. So I'm going to change this to five seconds. And now I'm going to drag out here and create a loop animation. Then drag out here from this looped output and create a random patch. Now basically this just selects a random number in a range from whatever you set to whatever you set. So we're going to start at zero. And because we have 20 images in our eight ball animation, I'm going to set the end range to be 20. So now it will just pick a random frame from inside that animation. And that will be the final output that you see on screen. And now we're going to drag out from the value output of random and we're going to create a round patch, which basically just takes the random number that's selected and rounds it up or down to the nearest whole number. So if it ends up being 5.5678 or whatever, it will just round that down or up to five or six. And now finally, we want to select our animation sequence here and create a patch for the current frame. And if we get that connected up. So now if we tap on the screen, you'll see that the image is frozen. The animation is no longer playing. That's because we have to go all the way back here to the screen tap. And from this gesture state output, connect it to the reset input of our offset. And now if we hit play again, you'll see it finally is starting to cycle through those images. It's doing it very, very slowly though. That's because the duration is one second per frame in this loop animation patch. So if we adjust that and bring it down to around, I don't know, 0.1, then we can hit it again and it will speed the whole thing up. And you can see that happening. So if I tap it again, then you'll see that the value here is based on this runtime. The runtime has so far has been 226 seconds. I'll hit refresh, we'll go back to zero. And if I tap on the screen, you'll see that this number now goes up. It counts up from zero to five, and that's how long this animation loop goes on for at a duration of 0.1 frames per second. So it's cycling through pretty fast. And then eventually it lands on a random number. In this case, it was 0.79. So I'm assuming it rounded that up to, yep, current frame number one. So it rounded it up to frame number one. So that's how that works. We tap it again, I'll show you one more time. It's going up here from zero, counting all the way up to five. This is still animating, looping around. And once it hits five, it selects a random number, 15.1, which it then rounds down to 15 and shows that frame as the final output. I'll just move this up, get everything a little bit more organized. So now if I switch over to the FaceTime camera, you'll be able to see me again. I'll switch the camera around a little bit. We can scale that up. And now you'll see the eight ball is tracked onto my forehead. I can move around and it kind of tracks on pretty well. We have the original eight ball texture here. And then when I tap on the screen, it will start cycling through 
all 20 of the frames that we've created and after five seconds it will choose a random number and project that frame as the final output that we see on screen. That's how we create this effect. So you can change the textures out for anything you like and use the same patch setup with a different set of images, a different amount. You can change the duration of the loop animation so it's even faster or much slower. You can even make the animation loop itself last longer. So you can make it, I don't know, one second. And now if we refresh and hit this, then it will cycle through for one second and then very quickly settle on a result. So yeah, that's gonna be this entire video. I hope that you found something in here useful. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Or will I? Oh. Oh no. Peace.